that's right. Um, let me go here. There we go. There's the chat. Wow, that's taking forever to... If I did it right, then I should be back. That was weird. Oh, <laughs> oh thank God. YouTube chat's telling me that uh, going forward, it'll no longer show moderation activity in the chat, which is great because, like, the shit bots were getting so much out of, you know, user got user got banned you know, this message got deleted like what was that what what does that that's so bizarre uh that they were creating that 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 super weird uh perverse incentive Sorry. Uh, things have been weird for me lately on account of I've been having some strange health issues, so uh, I might be a little bit out of it, but uh, I just grabbed a game at random from the Amogus. From the Amogus. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm, having, I'm having one of those times when it's like I want to have a normal day because I've been not having normal days lately, so. This seemed pretty normal. You may see me adjusting my pants a lot because I was having issues with my guts and I still am. Uh, you may also hear me burp a lot if I fail to mute the mic in time, but I'll do my best. Um, hmm. Now, let's see. Another issue is, okay, okay I'm having trouble Having trouble interacting with RetroArc here. Okay. Uh, you know what? I think, isn't there a mouse mode I have to turn on? Uh, it's like... It's like F11 or something, isn't it? Let's see. Hotkeys! Isn't it in here? I can swear. Uh, so there's the grab mouse option. That's on F11. I guess I could try that. Want, want. Nope. That's not it. Hmm. 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 Well, I'm just going to... Yeah, can't go. Okay, well, you know, for all I know, this game doesn't work. So let's just grab a different one. Uh, and then control alt Q for random game. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's just go for a shmup. Who cares? Hmm. Game capture. You're sure that's not game focus? Yeah, I tried that. That didn't do anything. Oh, and you know what? The cat jam. Uh, I didn't hit the cat jam successfully in the last one. Cause that was a bit of a bit of a cat jam.
Well, it's entirely possible that game was just crashed. I'm preemptively cat jamming. Wings of Death, uh, two. Okay. Okay, let's go. Hello, Cody. Okay, well, that was all right. I wouldn't say it was that much of a jam, to be frank. <sighs> I have considered making music, but uh, I have tried it, and I, I don't think I have talent. I just It just doesn't seem to click with me. Press button. I know this is just going to be a super generic shmup, but... Oh, it doesn't even run at 30 FPS. Come on. Oh, well, I, I guess actually it's European, so it would have been 25 FPS, and I guess maybe this is 25. No, this is like 18. Oh man, this is one of those shmups that has dudes come at you from below. I hate it. Damn, I had Blaster, but now I have Triangle again. That's an L. Oh, neat. When you respawn, you do a, a quick screen clear. That's courteous. Dang it. Now, I don't know if those... Do those hurt me? Yes, they do. I'm guessing those monies are actually money. This game probably has a store system. Ah. I don't seem to have any alternate fire. Boy, Turbo would be really nice. This is already killing my fingers. Ah. ah, I think there was a rapid fire there I could have gotten. The, <laughs> the, incredibly, the incredibly destructive force known as Triangle. Triangle. Yeah, you know, I feel like... Uh, 
You know, as of the Biga Shmup, this is actually all right, but I only started it to see if it worked, so. Uh, what else we got here? Um, Letrix, that looks very dull. Lethal Zone, that looks like another Shmup. Yeah, that's an R-Type. Not really much of a Shmup person. The Light Corridor sounds like a... Uh, a uh, uh, frickin' uh, oh come on um, William Gibson no no not quite Dif wrong sci-fi author is this oh is this a two player only game yeah this is some sort of future sport One moment. Ah, jeez. Ah. Oh, yeah, there is a Lion King here. Let's do that. But, uh, yeah, um, it it the thing in the thing in Shmup, so you power up a weapon that you lose all the power ups. Yeah, it's 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 bullshit. Nobody likes that. Wah! Red. So red. Gosh. Red. Well yeah, but the light corridor and virtual light are are pretty different tones. <laughs> Thank you, T Rex. <laughs> Lion King, the Europe. <laughs> oh right, I can accelerate. Gosh, I keep forgetting that. We bata? We're gonna get a terrible rendition of the theme song, I hope. Oh. Are we just having problems today? Is that what's up? Oh. No, it's going again. I don't know what it was doing. It's it's doing something. Maybe this one doesn't work either. Yeah, I kind of figure I'm not missing much, but I, I just, you know. All right, what else we got? Um, whoa. Wow, I don't think I've played this one. Let's go for that. Are there any cats in here? There's no cats in here right now. Otherwise, I'd show you a cat. That's what you come here for, right? If I get a few more failed loads, I'm going to have to start looking at, like, do I have the system set to something odd? Okay. Lording. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's a good game, but I've just already played it on other platforms. I don't like playing ports, as a rule. If it's a game that exists on multiple different platforms, I don't want to play it. I have my finger on the cat jam trigger, but... I don't think I'm going to be pressing it. Yeah, no... At least this is moving at 25 FPS. Okay. Pretty dope intro, still dope. Yo, but can I just play a game entirely like this, though? 
I want this super scalar Doom experience, but instead we're getting sort of a like uh, heavy metal two kind of energy. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm glad you're getting dressed, bro. Oh, not so much. D dressed, technically. There's an asterisk next to it in the scorebook. Yo, but this SNES RPG... Oh, the boy! Is this a boy-based game? Whoa! There's so many frames of... What? How are there that many frames of animation? Get out! Yo, so far, this is pretty sick. Look at the boy! Oh, gosh. Whoa, wait a minute. Shut the front door. This is 480i. Why? What? I've never seen this. This is an Amiga game with a with a 480i uh, title screen. You can actually tell. I, I could be jumping the gun here, but no. Pay close attention when I when I change. Uh... Oh, it won't be visible in the OBS. Um, you know, I'm not exactly. No, it is visible. Okay, I, I don't know if um, if YouTube compression. What am I saying? I don't know if the H.264 is killing it, but if you watch very closely, you can see the interlacing. So I think this is actually. 480i gosh that is also look at the wildly different resolution between the Lionheart logo and the surround below it this is one of the most interesting titles I have ever come across on this platform oh two button mode let's go info holy crap Whoa! On a pirate tormented machine as the Amiga. Oh my god! If you don't buy this game, we're gonna throw this Amiga in the garbage, just holding a gun to its head. This is incredible. This is a completely singular phenomenon that I have stumbled across here. Folks, this is why I've been going through these collections. This is the whole reason. This is the mother load. It's not even them begging for money. This is them saying like, hey, we put way too much effort into this compared to most Amiga developers. <laughs> oh no, it is a don't copy your floppy. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, you're not wrong. Holy shit, this is so much. Okay, what is the game going to end up being? Please let it be good. I'm going to get ready for gaming here. Oh, I don't get to keep flying the Durgan. This looks incredibly ambitious. I am like, my fingers are crossed. Th this is going to be good. I'm ready for the music to bump. <laughs> the swamps. Let's go. Let's go. Push button. All right. Let's do it. Okay, so on a CRT, we'd be getting some nice alpha effects at the bottom there. Just just want to... Okay, so it's the kind of game where you it's it's got modes. So my uh, button two jumps right now. If And, and then I move with the D-pad normally. But if I hold down button one, and I draw my weapon, and now I can't move, but I can attack. Oh. Oh, that's cute. So we have a high attack, a, four, a, a medium attack, and then a low attack. Okay, so a little awkward, but we'll... Oh. Yeah, I figured the piracy groups must have been literally hanging out with the game developers in a lot of cases. They, they had to have been a lot of the same people. So, okay. One thing I'll say about this that's a bummer is that for all that people talk about, oh, the Amiga had incredible graphics, and you're looking at it going like, yeah, it does. Look at this. This is amazing. 
why is it that the enemies are the exact same color as the ground? Or, or the background? Like, this seems to happen so much. I don't get it. Also, I'm a little disappointed. This is not a cat jam. I'm trying to figure out why that little pedestal is there. And also, is there a reason we can slide down this? Uh, the name of the game is Lionheart, and the name of the games I'm playing are always displayed up and to the right of the game itself. For convenience. Oh. Oh, let me also mention that this has a uh, post-Mario motion, so... Uh, I've got air control. I can change direction in midair. I didn't actually check the date on this. 93. Okay. Oh, wait. Does he do the... Uh... Oh, yep. Yeah, he does the uh, the, the t uh, tip of ledge thing. Yeah, the... Um... There's a lot of care has been taken with this. A lot of, lot of uh, thoughtful decisions made. Oof. I'm guessing the drink is an instant kill, but you never know. Oh, hand over hand. Yep. Except. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. It let me attack overhead. That's. Some games won't do that. Now, can we? Oh! Whoa! That's cool! You can climb up and balance on the thing! Which is how you get up to, uh... Oh. There. Now, show me a, uh, a graphically intense Amiga game that doesn't have H.R. Giger-inspired art. <laughs> I don't think it exists. Okay, so probably could have actually gotten up there. Oh. Whoa, we got some Mega Man nonsense going on here. Okay, the combat system's not very good, but we knew that. Honestly, like, the platforming physics are absolutely uh, um, unassailable. They're they're just they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, I think that was a health up that I did not need because I haven't really taken any damage. Yeah, the uh... oh, you can attack in mid air in mid jump. Oh, okay. I think I just assumed you couldn't. Oh, and you could do the down stab. Yeah, baby. All right. I mean, so far it is kind of just a basic platformer, but yeah, this is uh, this seems quite good. Oh. <sighs> Oh, is it boss time? Oh, I think I see how I'm supposed to do that. So is that just a normal... That was just a normal enemy. So yeah, as usual, I really don't like the combat. Um, beautiful graphics in this. And like, in a lot of, in a lot of games, I would say that... In a lot of Amiga games, I would say that there is a strong tendency to say, oh, gorgeous graphics, when what you really mean is that it has a lot of, uh, what did somebody call it? Balloon shading? Bubble shading? Something like that? Um, basically, the Amiga has a lot of colors. It has a lot of shades available, and it's easy to look at that and go like, oh, wow, these are very lush graphics. But lush, or even like, beautiful in a, in a in the sense of a painting of like you know static art like you'd see on deviant art back in the day is different from good game graphics this game in my opinion although it's not as contrasty as one would like honestly 
Um, oh, you can one-hitter quitter those guys. Nice. Uh, this still has pillow shading. There we go. Um, uh, this still has much better graphics than a lot of Amiga games that I've played in terms of uh, contrast. It's got very high contrast um, compar comparatively compared to a lot of other games. It's not where it should be. <laughs> It'd honestly be a lot um, nicer if they would go for... Uh, Maybe the low kicks are barking. I'll check. I think it's supposed to be like a ground scraping noise. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a bark. Anyway, it just kind of bums me out that they use all these colors for the sky and then didn't really save any for sprites or, or ground details. That's always a problem with Amiga games. And occasionally it's a problem with, you know, with, with other things. But, you know, anybody could... Anybody could fall prey to low contrast uh, art resources, you know. Um, it just seemed to happen a lot on the Amiga. I'm not sure why. It's it's one of the things that always kept me from really being able to appreciate it. But at least the character itself, uh, the actual the He-Man here, is pretty distinctive. You know, he's got... Hmm, do we think I can drop down here? Oh, well, I'm going to have to because... Oh. I didn't expect that to work. Um, but yeah, like, at least this guy stands out from the background. Which is, you can't always say that about a lot of these, uh, a lot of these titles. The number of times that I'm getting, like, punked by a dude off screen, but then I'm actually able to respond to it in time, is, like, more often than not, despite the hinky, um, combat system. So, gotta give that, gotta give it props for that. Interesting system with the platforms. I gotta respect that, too. Oh. Guy worked on the shanty? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't really expect that to work. Okay. Music's getting a little jammy. Oh, it's bug time. Oh. Oh, he's a... Oh! Metroid! Oh! I'll be honest, I cannot remember the details of the Amiga graphics system. Bug elevators! It doesn't make any sense, but... You know... This music kind of has some uh, Super Metroid vibes going on, you know? Oh, okay. So I think the um, the spinning platforms, I think even the ones that auto-spin, you can actually stun them. See, again, like that guy tried to punk me, but I got him. A lot of Amiga games don't make that... Uh... Whoa. Oh, the slowdown. Oh, it's brutal. Oh, maybe you can't stun him. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a one-hitter quitter. I keep expecting this particular uh, soundtrack uh, to, to just drop into a uh, street jungle. Um, which I think, was that a format track? I can't remember. Oof, a doof. Uh. Also, big ups to this game for actually having a life system instead of just one, one shot, you're dead. Ah, uh, no. Because I would have wiped immediately and given up on this spike section. Wow. Oh. Oh, interesting. Hey. I gotta jump... To get that health potion, I gotta jump down in between the spikes. Now, I should be able to do that. Oh! Look at that! Got the skills to pay the bills. 
Now, I have the suspicion that this is going to let me backtrack all the way to the beginning of the level, because I noticed there was a whole second layer up here. Again, decent platforming physics and whatnot. Let me, uh... Let me uh, uh, actually jump up and get that guy instead of just getting got by that guy. Gotta respect it. There we go. That's that's a little little janky on the um, the falling down um, uh, element of it, but uh, oops. There we go. And it's also kind of hard to change from a. Uh, Again, it's, it's kind of hard to change combat modes, but... You know, there might have been a limitation on how many inputs they could read at once or something. Um, maybe the ability to uh, select your attack by doing concurrent um, direction and fire uh, wasn't actually reliable. I'm not sure why, they, why they're doing this combat mode business. Ah, shit. Oh, oh okay. Okay, before I go up there, what's... Oh, there we go. And potion. Okay. Whew. Glad I went over there. Otherwise, I might have died going up the street. I think I died earlier. I think you respawn more or less in place. Oops. Shit. Wah. Wah. Oh. Boy, I wonder if there's a weapon upgrade or something up here. I guess this could just be the exit. I didn't finish... Oops. Shit spawner. I hate these. Okay, okay, good. Okay, down to one health. Ooh. I wonder if it becomes strategically relevant that the, uh... Oop, shit! I wonder if it becomes strategically relevant at some point that the, uh, normal platforms bounce. potion I don't need anymore. Okay, yep. Uh, this was the way I had to go. Because there's the exit. Whew. Oh, okay, yeah. It makes sense that this is the 13th best Amiga game, frankly. Um, this seems... This seems good. Uh, Adenode, I usually see it called air control. The ability to jump up and then move change direction once you're in, in the middle of the... Oh! Oops. Probably got a game over in here. Oh! I don't care about points, so I can just skip those bastards. So it's interesting, the game has a sort of, uh, so far it's got this sort of um, A, B, A, B uh, style where you, you play an outdoor level, then an indoor level, uh, kind of like, like Super Mario Brothers, honestly. So far, all I've picked up are these triangles, which might be like coins. Maybe when I get enough, I get a, a, another life. Um, and health potions. There don't seem to be any upgrades, any armor, anything like that. Which certainly was not, you know, uh, SOP um, at that time. But still, would have been a nice extra bit of flavor. Um, I think one thing that always... Uh, Oops. Oh, crap. I really thought I was going to be able to get that guy. Oop. Oh, wow. This, these, these little bastards are kind of hard to deal with. Um, anyway, one of the reasons I've always been a real dipshit for Metroidvanias is just because they really give you incentive for searching around. You know what I mean? All right. That's a game over, I believe. Still, good. Good. Oh. Credits. 
Wow, where's this gonna put me? The beginning of the. Yep. Okay. Oh, almost. Almost one cycled it. Oh, wow. This guy's tougher than the last one, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's really kind of complicated to do the downward attack. Um, you have to arm down forward every time. You can't just down, you can't, you can sort of down and forward, but it's a little, yeah. Also, you could, you could do that, but it doesn't seem very useful. A falling strike uh, is capable of clearing out basically everything below you in one go, but uh, these guys, it's really hard to avoid getting yeah, use this health potion. Uh, basically, what's the point in exploration if you're not going to get anything other than coins? You know? Um, never never could get myself interested in it, you know? Um, in, in sort of uh, conventional, old-school platformers. It's just really hard to get fired up for exploration as soon as you find out, oh, the core gameplay loop is just, you know, platform, platform, coin, platform, coin, platform, coin. Um, you know, uh, again, I, I, as I've discussed before, I grew up in the post-points era of gaming. Um, as, as did, honestly, most people at this point. Oh, no, come on! How far back? God, lost two lives just in here. Oh, Hannibal Barres, but not a landlord voice. This sucks, man. Whoa. Okay, well, so I don't even know. I, I guess this is repayment for getting through this awful cave, but the, at least they do give you a just a straight hard one up there. So I don't even know if collecting enough shards gets you a one up. Maybe that's not what they do. Maybe they're they're just the equivalent of points or No, they've got to contribute to a one up. Cuz you don't build a, you don't you don't collect them fast enough that to be a power up. Oh, God. I'm going to say this game does still have difficulty issues uh, as typical of so many. Oh, come on. Uh, typical of so many um, Amiga games and, and other European bedroom games. Just, like, really harsh. Yep. And you can't really game this guy. You kind of just got to fight him. There we go. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Is the next level interesting? Yeah, well, it has a poke, but... It has a poke that's got a little bit of range, but not enough. And more importantly, it's just you've got to get into and out of that combat mode to do it, and you have to stand in place. The only way you can move and attack is to jump attack, and it makes you attack upwards. So. <laughs> I, uh... I would, I would be, I'm going to probably call it on this game at this point. I would be really interested to see that game hacked to have better, uh, better, uh, 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 sorry. Um, <sighs> apologies. Uh, I'd love to see this game hacked to have better motion controls. It's, it's definitely more... It's it's more um, forgiving than some games, but not as forgiving as I really need in order to enjoy it in you know properly in this era. Uh, 
Wow. The blurb in Launchbox for this is interesting. It takes something pretty special these days to raise even half an eyebrow as far as golf sims are concerned. So you may be unenthusiastic at first about the claim on Lynx packaging that it's a golf simulation so realistic you'll think you're there. Why does this go on and on and on? Oh, no. This says that on an actual Amiga, it takes 25 seconds to redraw every view. So every time you swing your club, it takes 25 seconds to redraw. That's horrifying. Well, good thing it didn't load. I might have played it. Uh, yes, Letrix is Tetris where you spell words. That's why I didn't even look at it, because it looked really dumb. Okay, I'm going to fire up Little Puff in Dragonland, because it sounds like it could have good music. It's pretty much my reasoning here. Hey, Blob. Wait a minute. Did I just get owned? What's Dizzy doing here? sex bad. Boy, I'm glad I hit my mic mute successfully just now. Yeah, Electrix looks terrible. Oh, a code master's joint. Oh no, this looks awful. Yeah? A jail, spelled G-A-O-L. This guy has wings. Why can't he fly more than that? The music wants to be a bop, but I don't think it really is. Oh, okay, finally. Oh, I love Pitfall. The rest of the development narrator voice. He didn't. What, really? Uh, the joke about jail being spelled G-A-O-L is that back when they spelled it that way, it wasn't, jails weren't used the way they are now. Uh, so a jail was typically just uh, a, li a little roadside uh, single person prison uh, that a cop could use to stick you in before he went off and got some conveyance for, you know, taking you to uh, somewhere to actually do something with you. So I, I, it turns out I don't start out with fire. There we go. Okay. I had to pick up the potion in order to fire. Honestly, I hate this less than Dizzy. Come on, how do I trigger this thing to fall down? Oh, come on. 
What? I tried running past it. That didn't work. I tried running back. That didn't work. Well, it's like... It wasn't for punishment. Jail didn't used to be used for punishment. The punishment for most crimes used to be like a fine or they killed you. And that was about it. And um, jails used to be solely for holding people until they decided whether to do one of those two things. Am I supposed to get on the other side and then jump? Yeah, the bones do seem to have physics. Okay, let's try that. Let's try getting on the other side of it and then jumping to clear the uh, rock. Maybe that works. That's a fair point. Maybe I, I gotta like go back and uh, maybe I'm supposed to fall down the holes. Oh, that's it. I've actually, I guess I've used up the fire. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely doing something wrong. All right, so let's try it again. God, this music's annoying. Listen, I have a strong tolerance for uh, home computer games. Okay, I built it up on purpose. It's it's one of those things where you you take small amounts of poison until until you can tolerate it. You know. All these British games are so obsessed with food. I'm not sure I was supposed to be able to get over that. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, oh my god, I think I just... I think I just zipped. Everyone, listen. I just found a Codemasters game that's not well programmed. <laughs> Call the press. Well, yeah, but in this case, the food isn't even like health refills. It's all stuff for doing things. Like these all seem to have a purpose. Oh, well, I guess not actually because, uh, well, Oh yeah, there's no health. Everything is one, you know, one hit kill, so. I don't think I actually need to pick these up at all. I don't think they do anything. A gun? Gun! Oh, and a hard hat. Look at that. Now we just have to get out of here, which will probably be not straightforward. Three hours to get back up to the surface. Foot pump. Now, okay, surely I can't use the gun, right? No, I don't think so. Okay, at this point, I put enough time in that I'm going to bother stating my save. Does this kill me? What? Oh, I wasn't under... What? 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 <laughs> Back to the beginning? Yep, okay, that's why we stayed in save. I'm, I'm getting unpleasant, dizzy energy from this inventory system, unfortunately. I'm worried that I'm going to have to shuffle these silly items back and forth between fixed locations. Yeah, it does feel like it might be platforming point and click, but... Oh, there's a flotation device next to the spooter. Oh, but you know what? That's going to displace one of my other objects. Okay, now... You can't flap your wings. 
Yeah, I really think the best strategy here is to zip. down to pick it up, that's right. Not working. Nope, I don't think I can pick it up until I use one of these things. Okay, all right, so I have another strategy this time around. It's really funny that the, that the, I could, I, I could reliably get the zip to work. Uh, you'll see me at uh, SGDQ later. <laughs> oh, come on! Okay. So I've got the foot pump. I've got, you know, I, I have to believe that I'm just supposed to use the gun to kill the spider. And I'm just missing something. Box? No, I don't think I found a box. Oh, wait. Oh, crap. Is that an item? Oh! Oh, box! Get out! Well, I have... I, I got ye box... Oh, wait, what? Why does pressing down now let... Oh, get out. Sure, yeah, what? Yeah, what? Yeah, why not? Okay. Now, I don't trust like this, so... Let's see. Okay, so the rightmost one is the active item. What am I supposed to do about the B? Save is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I can't vault him. Okay, there we go. That is a item location, of course. Sure, why not? Why not? Why not? At this point, I don't even care. I'll have to come back for the gub, I guess. Okay, that kills me. My other guess here is that uh, if I go down to the water, the life belt's not going to actually work um, unless I pump it up. And I don't know how to combine two items, so that's going to take like 6 or 8 or 16 tries. Okay, shockingly, that, that just worked. Quite impressed. Wow. I uh, actually went fine. Diamond. Let's get this rot. That inchworm will absolutely kill me in one hit. Is this a building we can go into? 
Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a dizzy. Holy crap. But, you know, to be honest, it's less unpleasant than most of them. Oh, right, I see. Okay. Music's really annoying. All right. Let's go down once it... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. All right. You know what's messed up? I actually kind of like that. Like, I'm not going to play it more, but I, I respect it more than Dizzy. Which ain't saying much, but I respect it more. And, and I'll say it. I'll admit it. Um... Oh. Huh. Have I ever played this? Feels like I must have. Dizzy is just incredibly tedious. Like, there's no satisfaction in it, in my opinion. I've tried enjoying it, and... It just doesn't feel like there's any point in anything that I'm doing. You know? Everything feels like it's just a, a waste of time. Like, oh, cool, you got the thing, and you did the thing. It, it doesn't feel... Satisfying. Oh. Okay, I do not like that drawing. But is this about to be a bop? Okay. Okay. God, this is a this is a chill cat jam. getting this right this is funky hate this art hate it it's just it's got it together all right is the game any good funky but restrained i want a shirt that says that <sighs> uh, Dizzy is an egg who stars in a whole bunch of a very whole bunch of adventure games from I think Codemasters still um, made by two guys who made like thirty of them. They're all the exact they're like a very distinct kind of um, adventure game that nobody else ever did, and I find it just detestable, just awful. Was that cat jam? Okay, it looks like we don't have limited ammo. Whoa, why is this bouncy? Guessing those kill me instantly. Probably everything. Those are random. Come on. Okay, well, it's not an insta-kill, but it still sucks. Uh, holding a gun to a British game developer's head like, all you have to do is not put dripping water that hurts you in your game. And he's just sweating, just sweating and shaking, telling me he has a family. It's so easy, man. Wow, a checkpoint on the third screen. Both a good and bad sign. Wow. This game has such a dark energy to it. Okay, so... 
I've already decided that I'm not going to waste my time on this, and here's my reasoning. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's that kind of game. All right. Is that going to fall on me? Probably. I'll explain my reasoning in a moment as soon as I complete this. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. So, okay. Yeah, and that... Yeah, that music kind of feels like it has some, like, DKC energy. Um, hang on just a second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tedious Tim in Adventures in Time Sink Cavern. I need to get, I need to commission somebody to make that uh, splash screen for me. I, I need that game to exist. Someday I have to make that game. Uh, anyway, uh, but the specific beef that I have with the game that I just played is it has non-matched timing puzzles. Nope. Fuck that. Hello, Ben. Um, yeah, I know I'm streaming really late. I just, I've had a, a bit of a week. Uh, I've been having health issues and whatnot. I just decided, like, everyone just squeezes in at the end of the day. Um, it's not just that that game was hard. It's that it's unfair. That game was actually unfair. Because what you had going on is you had... You know, something going like this and something going like this. And the timing between the two is not an integer or, or, or fractional value of the other. Effectively, it's totally random. All you could do is jump on the lift and go, oh, I got zapped. Oh, well, there's nothing you can do about it. In a Mega Man game, in a Castlevania game, when you are going up and down on a lift, it, you, it is your decision whether you get hurt or not. In that game, it wasn't. Nobody could have predicted that reliably enough to be able to be certain they wouldn't get hurt on the way up. Uh, that would just that right there would be a run killer if you were trying to speed run this, and no one would ever get past it because it's effectively random. It's just it's too they're too off kilter, and uh, yeah, that's that's a bummer because again, clearly beautiful art. The music sounded like it could have gone somewhere. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I wanted to like it. I wanted to be excited about it. Uh, it's also way too dark. I mean, in addition to being dark in the, like, thematic sense, um, which, God, there's a lot of, like, really sort of, yeah, like, thematically dark games on this platform. It's also just uh, visually dark. You know, it's, it's not very pleasant to look at because everything is, you know, so hard to see. Um, and, again, you know, not contrast issues per se, but lack of visual interest um and uh that's a good one rt um yeah 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 i made my point uh all right are there any other games for this platform or have we played them all um mad news tank i'm really in sort of the sort of the 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 shit here yeah Huh. Let's fire this up. E A A A A A A A. It's in the A. E A Sports. 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 E E E. It's. That's right, I can accelerate. I don't have to keep making riffs on the EA Sports. Okay. Hmm. okay. Didn't realize I hadn't switched my camera back, but I just fixed it, so... Oh, 
Oh, I know. Yeah, I know the EEEE -E 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 video exists. That's what I was doing. This music is not a cat jam. I'd love to skip this, but... Oh! It's a mouse game. There we go. Whoa! Look at the guy. Um, well, Ben, there just aren't really that many CPC games, and a lot of them, tons of them, are ports from the ZX. So I don't know... Um, no, sorry, let me rephrase that. I get the impression there are considerably fewer CPC games than there are for most of the other platforms. Um, and that a ton of them are ZX Spectrum games. So I don't know how much time I would chew up with that, um, especially if I kept running into uh, games and going like, oh, right, I played this on the ZX. This is a better version, but only a little bit. And so much of it wasn't a better version because the machines had so, so much similarity that a lot of games were just straight ports. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'd still check it out. It's a pretty cool intro. I'm intrigued by this intro. Oh, Threed. Holy crap. We got some, like, elite shit going on here. As far as, uh... Definitely very real 3D. I wish I loved Elite. I want to love Elite, but it's just too open for me. <laughs> I don't know anything about the PCW. Not a damn thing. Uh, my, my reaction to this so far is, yeah, I love Out of This World. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be like a 3D... So like a 3D like cave flight kind of thing, which was a category of game that used to exist. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh no! Is this a Pac-Man? Uh, is this a 3D Pac-Man? Oh, no, it isn't. Whoa. Okay. Okay, so arrow up and down, select weapons. We got three different types of whistle. We have a scanner. Oh, those are thrusters. The, the, the blue bars at the top and bottom, those are showing my thruster status. <laughs> yeah, Papaya, that was really funny. I was really out of it that night, though. Uh, oh, spacebar hides the HUD. That's cool. How do we... Interesting. Oh. Whoa, what? Why are we doing this? Your squadron, don't shoot. Okay, so there's other... There's a, oh. It turns on hidden line removal. Neato. Dorito. Okay, how do we escape? I wish to escape. Okay, there we go. This game has a lot of controls. This... Oh, goddammit! Stop it! Okay, I think right-click gets me out of here. Okay, there we go. And then we got a button here. Click. Whoa. This is really cool. There's no music, naturally. Oh, okay, this is like damage control, I'll bet. Yep. Yep, apparently there, I'm reading the blurb here. There's a, uh, there's a uh, auto repair feature, so you've got to decide what gets repaired first. So this appears to be a game where you're in it for the long haul. Okay, let's see what uh, this button up here does. Whoa! 
Okay. Oh, okay. 20 minutes of energy left. We've got different shields. Here's our energy reserves. Here's our batteries. Uh, and then I guess this is how much power our individual items use. The atomic hammer uses 999. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Again, how do I get out of here? There we go. Jeez. Now, if I press this button here... Oh. Oh, I see. Okay, so all these little tabs, these little triangular tabs, um, give you a little info dialogue on whatever you're looking at. It's always the same dialogue, just with different context. That's kind of cute. Not yet known. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Gosh, that's taken. Oh, it's a 3D map system. Get out. This is freaking cool. Oh, that's cute. It shows you whether you're... It highlights uh, uh, the current line if you're on top of a valid uh, tunnel. Oh, man, this is cool. Oh, Rebecca Heinemann did those? I didn't know that. Makes sense, though. She's unstoppable. Okay. So, we right-click here. That puts us in, like, interact mode. But how do we move? Left click doesn't seem to do very much. So let's try some buttons here. Shift, no. I think space did that. Okay. Enter. What about what about some joystick buttons? Oh, there we go. Okay. Whoa. What? Is this a combination joystick mouse? Get out. Is that is that precedented? Who this man? Oh, he's moving. Whatever he is, he's moving. Ah, uh, uh, back us off. Turn around. Turn around. Oh, God, why can't I turn around? Oh, right, because I actually have to do that. There we go. Okay. Oh god, it's uh, it's in the rearview mirror, so it's weird. How do I I'm trying to figure out how to use the scanner? Do I click here? No. Is that it? No. All right, I need a manual for this. <sighs> All right. Let me, uh, what is this game called? Magic Fly? Ooh, Magic Fly. Look up the manual for this damn thing. <laughs> Flight Guide. The Magic Fly is simple to navigate. No, no, if you had to say that, you're already wrong. Um, if you come under attack, you have a craft which can outmaneuver in the smallest of spaces. No, that's not true. Launch defensive webs and outrun the enemy with turbo engines. None of that seems true. Uh, ah, oh jeez, okay. Sorry, folks, I have to read the manual for a little bit. Otherwise, this game is incomprehensible. Okay, lasers have unlimited shots. Good. The docking bay can... Uh, I think that's where you restock. Hmm. Okay, so I guess I have to go to docking bays to pick up items. All right. Damage control. Okay, but where's the instructions on how to actually play? The magic fly is navigated through junctions by means of zone flying. The zone indicator shows you which zone you are in. Octagonal shape at bottom right of main screen. Oh, okay, so you don't actually fly the thing directly. 
you just fly into a junction and then select the direction you want to turn. Man, I don't know how I feel about that. Again, it feels very British home computer to me. But I guess maybe... Eh. While moving between tunnels, a uh, junction, you have no control over the magic fly. The disabling of the control and weapon launching is for your own protection. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, jeez. I'm still not finding instructions on how the hell... Okay. In flight mode, the mouse movement changes the attitude of the magic fly. If lasers are your current weapons, the target will move with the mouse and the craft will pitch and yaw in response. Okay. Yeah? Yeah? But how do I... How? Man! This looks like it could be amazing! Okay, there's different power settings on the lasers. That's cool. If you fire directly at a flat surface, it'll bounce back and kill you. Okay, cool. Good to know. There's an automatic turret called the cat. Meow. Holy shit. Where are the, where are the controls? Finally. Holy shit. F flips. C activates ECM. Tab toggles enhanced vision. T is for turbo, B is for docking, A is for the atomic sledgehammer. Uh, uh, wait, what? There's still no instru There's no instructions on how to fire your guns. What? What? Holy shit! I... I... Did... Da, da! I want to play your game! It's incredible! This is incredible! How do I fire? I'm, I'm, I, I don't actually think that I've ever played a game where I could not figure out how to fire. Okay, you know what? I have the scanner selected. Let's maybe, maybe it doesn't like that. Maybe if I select the laser, it'll just become obvious. Does this fire? Oh. Well, okay, um... All right, and apparently it's not necessarily a joystick game. Okay. Oops, we are in reverse view right now. There we go. It's not necessarily a joystick game. It's a keyboard game. Oh, I see. Okay, so the little arrow or the little line stretching out towards the mouse cursor doesn't actually mean that we're going to fire that way. It just means that... No, it doesn't mean a goddamn thing, actually. Oh. Okay. Okay. Am I dead? What's going on? Okay, this game sucks. I want this game to be good, but you know what it isn't? Good. It's not good! Wow! 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 Holy crap! Ah, uh, jeez Louise. Another very generic platformer. Might be okay, but I'm not sure I care. Are there any games on this platform? Uh, Magic Pockets, that got ported. Boy, look at that frog. Yeah, but are there any games on this platform? Yo, yo, hey, but you got any games on your Amiga? Sure, sure, let's fire up whatever the hell this is. Most of the super weapons fire backwards? Wait a minute. You can't... So you have to flip your ship around to use the atomic hammer? 
Wow. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, no. You know what? Whatever. I'm starting to realize the reason nobody wrote a good manual for that game is because it sucks. This, this also, this, ugh, this is not a good, this is not a cat jam. Yeah, okay, all right. I wonder if this is a real crash. Probably not. Oh, maybe. Oh, thank God. Now we can move on to another game. I was worried I'd actually have to play that. Wait, play games on this stream? I don't understand. I don't... <laughs> Video games? Doesn't look like anything to me. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh, manic damn miner. Nope, not even a little bit. Ugh. It's a clone of a Nintendo game. Gorf. McDonald Land. Adventure game, whatever we got going on there. Oh boy, I'm running out of games. Where are the games? Yo, oh, but look at that guy though. Okay, I know you, I know that picture's not very big on your screen, but trust me, that's a kitty. I need to take a screenshot of him. Oh, Mega Fortress and... Oh, okay, that is not related to Mega Traveler. That's a separate thing. Are there any games in here, though? We got all these programs, but where are they? Wait a minute. Really? This is a Tate mode uh, arcade game they just ported to Amiga Unchanged? Huh. Sure, all right. Yeah, acrylic, that sounds about right. You know, speaking of kitty, where are Soba and Udon? Wait, is this... Okay, this is screaming for a copyright strike, so I'm not even going to launch it. But this looks like it's not actually just the Genesis game. Huh. That's fascinating. Oh, jeez. Yeah, the Micro Machines, yeah, it's just going to be the, the, the... I think that came out for SNES. Oh, man. Oh, you know what we need to do? Random game. Control-Alt-Q. Well, that didn't work. But what else do we have? Whoa. Boy, this looks like another game with interesting graphics that aren't necessarily good. <laughs> the synopsis here says, Following the success of Apidia and Simant, insect-related games are back in vogue. <laughs> oh, there was an arcade version of Moonwalker. I did not know that. Horror zombies from the crypt. Wow, we're, we're, in, we're in the quality zone right now. I'm having trouble finding good games tonight. You know what? I'm launching Hover Force. Ooh, Accolade. That means it's the good shit. I can't imagine somebody porting an isometric game to a uh, to the Amiga and making it less isometric. Well, that's not worth it. I'm not doing that. Apparently it'll just let me do this forever. Maybe eventually I'll, I'll get it right. Normally these things kick you out after a few, but we, let, let's just brute force it, right? Welcome to uh, welcome to Twitch brute forces the security on a video game. I'm glad I'm glad you joined. Oh boy, wow, we're not we're not doing great. This this is making me want to just give up on this whole thing and go play like Thief the Dark Project. Man, I wish that Thief was a better game than it was, and I wish that it had gotten a chance to get rebooted. Um, but at this point, it, like, if they ever did, somehow, it would just come off as a as a dishonored clone, somehow. Thief is 
cool, but it's not that good a game. Sorry, I don't like it very much. And a lot of people agree with me. God, actually, yeah, Twitch brute forces a password does seem like a thing nobody has done yet and could. It'd be pointless. It'd be slower in doing it with the personal computer. Um, but uh, you know what I'm saying. Once again, I successfully hit the mute button in time. At least I hope so. Oh god, immortal. Are there any games here, though? Like... What about games? Anybody like games? You got some... You got games on your phone? Oh man, all these Indiana games. Oof. I had at least one of these for the IBM personal computer and 100% compatible. Um... I can't remember if I had any of the action-y ones or just the adventure ones. I was uh, too boring a kid to be into adventure games. I had a bunch of them. Uh, I was just very dumb and did not uh, did not know how to enjoy them. And now it is too late. Okay, I'm too curious about this. Uh... I'm just going to fire this one up. Like, Thief... Thief was so close to getting it right, but it needed to be made about five years later for it to really be good. That's my opinion. Thief is almost this, like, quiet, contemplative game, except that... N if you're really, really, really good... You could get that atmosphere, but the fact that they do... See if we better if there were no enemies in it. You know, if it just wasn't a game with combat, I think it would be a better game. If it was a game where, like, the goal was more to, like, not affect the flow of events... Rather, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what would make Thief truly good, but... I think that the uh, the whole combat mechanic in it really takes most of the fun out of it. Not to mention the fact that there's no way for a stealth game to not be absurd. It's just impossible. Like, you're always going to have, like, yep, I'm standing right here. There's no way this guy would not be able to see me. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm blocking the light from the door 20 feet behind me. And he's standing right in front of me, but because the numbers say he can't see me, he can't see me. Like, that shit never really isn't absurd. It's always, always absurd. And it always sort of takes all of the punch out of the game. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to fix Thief. But I do feel that there is some fixing to be done. That's my opinion. We're not playing James Pond. Marble. Oh my god. Yeah? What does this mean? What? What could possibly be going on right now? I'm going to change machines. Oh, we've been on A2000 this whole time. That might be relevant to our problems. Okay. 
Here we go again now. It might also be it's trying to do some weird nonsense with the disk fast loading. I don't know. Oh, nice. I love dot matrix printers. They're very loud and inconvenient. Oh, hey, there we go. There are probably a number of games that would have worked instead of not working if I had switched machines earlier. I, I love this, like, major arcade game. I think major. It's an arcade game, right? Yeah, Atari, there we go. Ported by Anne Guy. One man. Okay, uh, let's do mouse capture. That did not work. Oh, okay, input device joystick. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. I would say $300 is too much for a Videonics MX-1 unless you really are, like, good on money. Like, if it's in good condition, like, it's 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 plenty fun to play around with, but I feel like it's more of a $150 device, personally. And, and tops at that. If you were going to spend $300, you'd probably be better off with a Panasonic WJ MX-1. 50, but even so, like, I think you can get those for less. The Amiga's, it's really funny to me how many Amiga games are, actually have worse music than the stuff they were ported from. Like, there's Amiga games, there's Amiga ports from PC and from, like, Genesis and SNES and, I think, NES that all have worse music uh, for no apparent reason. I really have no idea. Bizarre. Yeah, like, look, listen to this shit. Could this be how this is supposed to sound? Also, the controls are bad. Everything about this is bad. This is a bad port. Like I think I think maybe the NES actually had a better port than this. I'm sorry, that's missing me. Yeah, that's really it. Like, fucking up this specific track in Marble Madness is really statue defeat for the Jaws of Victory. Like, y y you're being handed a winner. Um, all you have to do is not commit any evil acts. But they chose to sin. God, this soundtrack sucks major. I can't listen to this. Holy, holy shit. Wow. Wow. Sorry, palate cleanser. Oh. Oh, everything is okay now.
Oh man, you hear that bass line coming in? That's so good. Okay, and then what about the arcade? Okay, so this is from MAME. I don't know if this is exactly how it would have sounded. What about... Let's try another YouTube video. Okay, that seems to agree. Uh, okay. What other platforms would this have been on? I mean, it got ported to everything, right? It must have. Wait, actually, did it? Oh, wow, I guess... No, not really. Huh. I, I guess uh, not really all that many platforms, if we're honest. Oh, but you know what? Let's see. What did the FM Towns do with it? Oh, man, yeah. Okay, yeah, that scans. This isn't even a cat jam. This is just chill. We gotta see where this goes. I'm sorry you can't see anything. I'm just I'm over here on YouTube. I'm just playing YouTube videos at you now on my YouTube video. Yeah, it makes sense that they would have gone Red Book on it, and particularly like this. Okay, beginner race. Oh wow, really? Ugh. Uh, man, no. Uh, I, no, we don't believe in any of that over here. Um, huh. And then there's also one year, supposedly, Mega Drive. Okay, I mean, all right, that's solid. You know, it's actually kind of better than the other uh, arcade versions that I just, just listened to. Ugh. Yeah, okay. <sighs> you know, I've nearly cleared my palate from that terrible rendition, but let's listen to Orpheus of the Underworld for the CCT4 just for good measure before we continue. That's a cat jam. Okay, but you have to agree that Toho is an exception to the rule. The Toho guy is a damn overachiever, and you can't deny that. I'm assuming it's a guy. I don't know. I feel like I've heard a lot of people refer to the Toho guy, but I can easily believe that it is not. Uh, we're back in the M's again. Control Q. Oh, God, what is this? 1996. Oh, this is one of the... This is one of the very uh, few attempts to... Uh... Okay, the Cave Story guy is also an overachiever, and you know this! Anyway, this game is one of the... The few attempts to get a Doom on the Amiga. I don't think it's even going to run on here. Wow, O should put it out. Wow, there's some demo scene nonsense going on here. That makes sense. Hmm, wonder if that was calculated or pre-rendered. I could believe either one. 
Oh, it does say Alien Breed 3D, doesn't it? Huh. Weird. Well, let's see if it even runs. Oh! Oh, yeah. Okay, my immediate, res my immediate visceral response to this was, oh, yeah, I love Castlevania. I, I don't know why. Forgetting I could accelerate this. Oh, God. Oh, no. I never have good luck with this experience. Oh, of course. Of course. Okay. Disk control. Load new disk. If we just select that again, doesn't it... Uh... Isn't there some trick where it selects the next disc if I do that? No. Uh, sucks. Appended disc. Okay, does that work? No, it doesn't. This is not worth the effort, especially because it's not going to work. Uh, besides, it was going to run at like an FPS and be like the worst Doom clone you've ever seen. It's not not worth it. Not worth it. Uh, here, let's run something that might actually work. Vector graphics. Huh. Oh, go to me. Konami published, yeah, Konami published this. Oh my god, copy protection. No, I, I no, I don't have time for this. It's never worth it. I go try and look up the damn manual. I try six or seven times to punch it in there. If I can even find the manual. Ugh. Really wish I had a collection of cracked games. It's not the 90s. There's no time for clacks. Let's keep going. Night Orc, no. Nightmare, no. The Crystal, not even a little bit. Oh, I thought this had Crypto and Egg, but it's 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 Krypton Egg. Gosh, you know, that's obviously just a, 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 a an or an Arkanoid, but boy, does it have a look. What if it has a sound too? There's nothing wrong with clacks. It's just that it's not the 90s and there's no longer time for it. It's a bit of a bop. Whoa. Space for the pause. I, I don't mess around with I don't mess around with those high power laser pointers. I just have a little hundred milliwatt one or whatever it is. Five milliwatt one, whatever it is. Katie, I was like that for months. Alright. Are the jams over? 
The jams have ended. Oh, come on. The game is gorgeous, but it is noisy. Fish. There's fish. Oh, my favorite. I was in paddle jail for a bit there. Wow. What they say, buddy, that's good Arkanoid. Oh no, I have slow paddle. Afraid that's an L, and that's even more of an L. Come on, what's going on here? Uh, whoa. I'm sticky. this captive ball, but there was absolutely no way to fire it to the right, so it was utterly useless on this level. Ah, uh, I don't understand it. What, what, where, what, where's my paddle? Is it an invisible paddle? I strongly suspect the paddle is there, but simply invisible. Because the number of paddles did not go down in the status bar. This sucks. This is not a good Arkanoid, in my opinion. Man, I, I don't even know at this point. I, I guess I don't think it's an invisible paddle. I think it really is gone. The game is just playing itself. Sure. Yeah, you know, whatever. I, I didn't actually want to play the game. It's no big deal. I can't even die. I don't even have the dignity of death. Wah! What? Fuck! What? What? Bad game. Bad game. Bad game. Krypton egg. Not good. Ugh. Oh, they poured Knights of the Sky to this. I'm not going to play it. It's just a 3D flight sim. Combat Flight Sim. You know, I will play it, actually. No, you know what? What's going to happen is uh, it's going to want a code from the manual. I guarantee it. Wh what the hell? Wow, this is an original disc copying program that came with the game, it looks like. That's cots. Oh, okay. Sure. What the hell? This one, ac this one actually correctly mounted both discs. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Tally ho, chaps! Oh jeez! I wanted to like that Arkanoid clone, but I don't. Yeah. Okay. All right, Nadia. That's a good one. I'll, I'll accept that. Good bit. Right, right, I can accelerate the loading. Oh my god, no, I'm not playing this game. L literally, literally, I'm not, I'm not playing this game. 
Has everyone been enjoying how many times I try to play a game and then we don't actually play it after I forget to accelerate the loading and we wait for a while and then it fails to load? I hope you're all having a blast tonight. Oh, boy. Golf. Not golf. The two types of game. Oh, no. Last Ninja. I didn't know they made sequels to that. Wow, I like how in every single one of these screenshots, the sprite is in the exact same position, which tells you a lot about how this game plays. It's like uh, it's like that gif of characters from Control-Alt-Delete. Oh, Traveler's Tales developed this. I can't remember what else they developed. I'm sure I've played this before. Also, hello to New Jersey. <laughs> wow. It let's you skip the intro. That's wild. I, I figured the music would be there at any moment, so I didn't need to accelerate it. <sighs> okay. Psygnosis game, can't argue with that. this little spinning chip what's up little spinning chip uh we are theoretically going to play leander but i'm waiting for it to play the intro I guess, is it not going to... Oh, okay, it was waiting for me to press something, I suppose. Okay. It's a really long intro. mod file of this. That's what I thought. I think this is a format track. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a, a track by format. Oh, <laughs> you're here again. Hello. Hi. Well, there we go. Yeah, I thought I remembered it being from my uh, collection of, uh, of your tracks. Oh, thanks, man. 
<laughs> this is the second time that I've been sitting here going like, oh, dang it, I'm sure I recognize this. And then as soon as I go, I think it's format, he's there. <laughs> What's well, a banging track? Good work. The normal guy just couldn't come up with a good title track? I guess? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, huh. That character moves a lot smoother than I was prepared for. Okay, we've got s some... We've got some limited air control. They kind of move like they're on ice a little bit. I wish there was sound effects. Oh, Tim Wright. Huh. Look at how many frames are in that walk animation. Wait a minute. Huh, if I crouch and hold down fire, I charge up, and when I let go, is that a screen clear? It seems to be, and it, I guess it's separate from my bombs quantity. I guess I jumped into the spike, damn it. Okay, yeah, unfortunately, I'm gonna say this is not a very good game. And again, see, they're using brown for enemies that stand in front of a brown background. I don't, they had other colors. They've got these nice greens. They could have put the guys in green. Why not do that? I don't get it. There must be some limitation on the platform I'm not aware of. Oh, that's... Oh, that's odd. Huh. I don't know if you can see this, but on the rightmost corner... Oh, yeah, you could definitely see it in the stream. On the rightmost uh, edge of the screen... The last column there, every other row is alternating between color and solid black. So there's this weird pulsating uh, interlacing effect going on over there. I don't know what that's about. Wah! Yeah, hmm, unfortunately I just don't think this is a very good game. That's a shame. I would have liked to like it. There we go. Huh. Great animations, not an incredibly fun game, if I'm honest. Uh, all right, well, what else do we have? Isometric game, not my thing. Um, oh, you know, is that Legend of, yeah, it's Legend of Gel. I thought it might have been Duel, it was just a weird font, but no. It's a made up word. Many Leisure Suit Larry games. Oh, did I did I try playing this before? This is actually like a first person uh It's a texture mapped 3D event uh RPG on the Amiga. Hmm. 
Uh, we weren't actually playing Dizzy before. We were playing... The only game I played today was the dinosaur game, I forgot the name of, that started out with an ad for Dizzy. Which was essentially Dizzy. Yeah, Puff and Dragonland does sound correct. Okay, so I'm probably not going to be able to play this game because it expects me to have multiple discs and probably generate my character before launching the game and whatnot. So I'm guessing this is not going to work out. Wah! Sorry for the flashing lights, everyone. Oh, it's a U.S. Gold title. Synthetic Dimensions. Game. In case you were unaware that this was a game. Yeah, I'm guessing the entire first disc is going to be spent on a cinematic or something, and I will have to put in disc two in order to play the game at all. The boy. Okay, can I skip this? No. Ah, you know what? Uh, I'm actually going to give this one one more shot, but I'm going to switch it to... Let's do a... Ah, whatever, let's do a 4,000. Why not? Whatever. Bonk. Oh, I don't have a ROM for that. Remember when I said, why not? Well, <laughs> there's a reason why not. Okay, let, let's do a, a 1,200 then. Oh, there we go. That's that's the, got the memory quantities I was hoping for. Okay, there we go. I got the wrong for that one. Okay. Hunter. Did I try playing Hunter? I don't remember. I don't remember if I looked at a game called Hunter. Pit Fighter? I don't think so. I don't think they poured that to Amiga, but I could be wrong. Bryce 3D seems reasonable for those. Oh, that's right. Sorry, the cat jam is still there. You're absolutely right. This is a game that Pat likes. Whoa. Okay, I don't think we're actually in-game yet. having problems. Oh. Whoop. Wait. What are we doing? Oh. Oh, I think my controller is running out of juice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, oh, you know what? This is probably the load interface. Now that I think about it. Um, there we go. Uh-huh. I don't know if I ever played Hunter. Oh, okay. The game is going now. And yeah, I was going to say, this game looks incredibly ambitious, so I'm not surprised that, uh... I'm not surprised if some names worked on it. It's the store building just opposite the town gates. Oh, c whoa! We've got that, uh, sort of, um verb noun uh, system from, you know, Morrowind. <laughs> None of your business. Well, the town gate. We just addressed this, right? Where is the town gate? Right here! <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> Westward. Okay. This guy has no idea what day it is. And it's none of my business what time it is. <laughs> Store... Store Wildfowl. He won't tell me what time of day it is, but he will say that he worships Agar, god of the sea. And he's a bounty hunter. Wow, okay. And then uh, we could fight him. That's probably trade. Uh, or it might have been steal. Oops-a-doopsie. Oops-a-doopsie. Oh, oh, row. 
Oh, I made him mad. Am I being attacked? Oh. Oh, ruh -roh. Um. I erred. Oh, okay, cool. If you right-click, then you get direct control. Dorito, Dorito. Oh. What? Buildings actually sort of have insides? Get out. This is, um... This is remarkable for this platform and this era and whatnot. Holy crap, that's actually an inside to a building. This is, um... This is, like, on par with Ken's Labyrinth, you know? As far as, uh... Whoa. B? R? What are we looking at? What? So, yeah. Th they're dealing with really low resolution and an extremely limited gameplay area, and that's a bummer, because I think... I, I doubt this was a massive hit, and uh, I feel like the, the primary reason for that would be that this just... It's really hard to, 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 to make things out. Like, I can see what they're doing, but... Yeah. I think, on the PC, this looks like it could have been a pretty a pretty wild game, but on here, I feel like... Mm. I wonder if this is copy protection. This might be copy protection. Oh, have a good night, Ben. Oh. Oh, wait. This might be a bug. No, no. Oh, no, no. This is copy protection. There we go. There we go. I see what it is now. You rotate this ring to one, this one to three, this one to 17, and then it gives you the square. Okay. Okay. Legends of Valor copy protection. Let's see. Um, yeah. Looks like... Oh, you know what? This was ported to DOS. Let me take a look at that. Um, it looks similar, but better. Probably has music, too. You know what? I kind of want to just go play this on, on DOS and see what that's like. Um... Also, this, of course, yeah, this sounds pretty, uh, pretty ambitious. You know, they, uh, had a whole bunch of feelies in the box. Um, wait, what? Okay, apparently when you bought this game, there was an offer in the box where you could mail a photo of yourself to the developers with a fee, and they would digitize your face and send a floppy disk back to you with a character portrait you could use in-game. Get out. That's radical. That that absolutely slaps. I re I respect that. That's um, what is it? The uh, the Tiger Woods uh, face thing uh, for uh, for the Pika Tour like two twenty eleven. Uh, the the McElroys did a Monster Factory. Like, we only get one shot at this juice. Ah. <laughs> uh. Hang on a second. Let me see. Can I get... Can I get this game for DOS and just run that? Games. Files. What what year was this? Probably, what, 93? I'm thinking. 92. Wow. Man. That's impressive. Yeah, here we go. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. It got published both under uh, Strategic Simulations, Inc., of course, and under U.S. Gold. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Let me see if I can file... File? Let me see if I can fire this up. The, the real bummer... The real bummer about the... Uh, about the Amiga, more than anything else, is just the fact that all of the home computers had this irritating tendency to have either sound effects or music, and not both. And, you know, I don't... I, I, I have really gotten better about dunking on European game developers. I'm trying to be nicer about it. 
but I frankly am just not sure what the problem was because other platforms had voice limitations as well and they had processing limitations as well. The Amiga, for instance, was much faster than an NES. So if the NES could manage, you know, four-channel audio, four-channel music mixed in with sound effects during gameplay, you know, with, with small development teams, I, I just don't understand why computer developers were so bad about it. You know, I... I, I Sorry, it just sounds like they weren't trying all that hard. I don't know what to say. Give me a sec. I'm checking to see if this actually runs in DOSBox. Yeah, it would have been... Pol well, I mean, Polaroid, or if they were scanning it, they could really be whatever, you know? So you could, you could probably send them a... Uh, um, any kind of print would probably be would probably be okay. Okay, so unsurprisingly, the DOS version actually has animations uh, instead of just still images. Which again, Amiga is supposed to be this graphics powerhouse, but you know it's the first thing to go is, is stuff like this. It's you know the discs weren't any bigger, I don't think, on the PC. Yeah, I don't get it. Okay, this one's straightforward. The copy protection is just a simple, uh, a simple manual. So, Legends of Valor DOS manual. You know, I guess if you sent them the a thermal print and and you were, you just told them like, listen, this is all I got. It's good enough. Please just just go for it. <laughs> They'd probably do it, right? <laughs> oh boy. Um. Hang on. Oh, here's the manual. Oh, well. Oh, oh, guess what, everyone? Guess what? Guess what? There's new news. Everyone, everyone, look. Hello. Hello. It's Udon. Hello. Come here. I want everyone to see her. Look at how she is sitting. Gosh, she's so... Look at her little paws. She's so good at it. She's so good at... Hello. Hi. Up, Don? Oh, you love going up, don't you? I mean, yes, but not when I want her to. Ooh, Don? She, she has, like, a, a strong air of politeness that's completely false. She's not polite at all. Uh, there's her ass. There's her ass. Here's her ass. But there she is. There she is. That's Udon. 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 Turn around. Did, what's with this tail? What's this tail situation? This is rude. Yep, the whole cat. It's two cats, is the thing. She's two cats right down the middle. Udon, I'm going to rotate you. There you go. Hello. Hi. Rub, 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 rub. Hey, would you like to head bonk me? Wow. You're not being much of a cat right now. She doesn't really make noises. But gosh, is she ever pretty. We're done. Say hello. This is the best she can manage. She doesn't speak unless she's being really irritating. And right now, she's just relaxing. Chin rubs. Chin rubs? Yes. If you catch her performing a crime and interrupt her, like if she's trying to take something that she's not allowed to take or to eat plastic, she loves to eat plastic. There's actually, there's some foam back there. See in that little crevice to the right of the cabinet? There's some foam. She loves to try and eat that foam. She's not good at it, fortunately. But uh, if you interrupt her, if you pick her up while she's doing it, then she'll squeak at you. Now somebody asked, yo, what's that thing behind you? I assume you were talking. 
Oh, dang it. Webcam, you failed me. I assume you're talking about that. Is that the thing you were asking about? This USB cable's not as long as I wish it was. Man. I have no way to mount this camera conveniently. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. Yeah, this is a flight case for... Oh, actually, this is the wrong side. I don't want to open this one anyway. Hang on. There's an LCD monitor mounted to this side, and then on the other... That is the interface panel for the Video Toaster 5, uh, or the Video Toaster 2, 3, or 4. So uh, this guy plugs into the card and the personal computer, breaks out all your video inputs and outputs, and then this guy here is your control panel. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get like a 2U rack chassis to go down there. I'm going to build the whole machine up inside this thing. Um, and then there's this 17-inch uh, uh, rugged LCD in the other side. And just enough room that I think I'll be able to tuck in the control panel and a keyboard and mouse, the whole machine. And then uh, I've got some digital... Uh, TV converters in there so you could tune in a couple TV stations put on inputs 1 and 2 and that way this will be a complete self-contained fully portable video toaster demonstration unit I can haul out to like VCF or whatever um, if I ever get myself out to one of those so just literally bring it in throw it on a table pop the covers and plug it in bam Bob's your uncle uh, people can play with it you won't even have to get cameras hooked up or anything although you can you know I'll also be able to do that because it takes uh, 24 inputs. <laughs> uh, I've actually uh, got kind of a funny amount of new tech gear right now because there's a TriCaster and there's a TriCaster. Uh, sort of the descendants of this big boy. Um, and uh, I have another TriCaster at work and I've got like... Uh, I also have another Video Toaster 3 rig coming once the guy gets it packed up. And another person sending me another TriCaster, uh, as well as uh, an Amiga 2000 with Video Toaster original. So, yeah. The, 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 the TriCaster, the new tech, uh, how the hell did I have this, oh, how did I have this webcam mounted? Was it like that? There we go. The new tech pile does not stop from getting taller. Bonk. There we go. Anyway. Okay, uh, so Internet Archive does not have an archive of the Legends of Valor manual for PC. Holy crap. This just does not end. Uh, here we go. I think I got it. Okay, page 50, line 9, word 8. Is that really page 50? Oh, holy crap, there really are, like, 70 pages to this manual. Okay, line 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Word 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <sighs> hey, that worked! Okay. Oh, god damn it! but it didn't actually load the game. Oh, there we go, you gotta chain one into the next. Ah, dang it. Jeff Gilling's video. I'm not sure if I did see that. Oh yeah, these are the uh, cinematics that didn't play out in the... Uh... Oh, wait, who's that? Oh, oh, you know what? Actually, everyone, the cinematics are about like you'd expect. Yeah, there's the boy. But you know what? Hello. Guess who it is? It's Soba. It's Soba. Soba, do you love going up? That's the face of a cat that loves going up. Let's put her on the desk. Hello. Hello. Everyone, two of them. 
Oh, two of this is a certified two of them moment. Wow. Wow. Two of them, everyone. I am petting two cats at once. My favorite thing is when they do the same thing. It's so good. <laughs> See, they're both peering. <sighs> yep, they're up now. So it was like, well, <laughs> you too, huh? It's hard to get good angles on them when they won't cooperate. But gosh, golly gee. Come on. You jerks. Both of you look up here. Come on. No dice. <laughs> Absolutely two of the prettiest cats I've ever seen in my life. I cannot believe I am lucky enough to have them. In every other regard, they're just horrible creatures. They're just constantly uh, causing problems. They're terrible nuisances. But, uh, boy, howdy, are they ever kitties. Uh, you know, I might at some point be able to replicate the two of them uh, phenomenon. Uh, I'm going to have to get a blue sheet and, and just do my best. All right. But we're not here for that. We're here to play video games, in theory. So, one thing I've noticed is that so far, there's no sound from this game, and that is concerning me. Oh man, their tails are so inconvenient. Do I have DOSBox muted? That seems possible. Uh, nope, it's not muted. It says it's loading, but that's not true. Oh no. Oh no. No, it's definitely not working. Man, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not having a good time with video game tonight. Uh, damn it. Let's try that again. Yeah, it didn't even ask me for uh, copy protection last time, I thought. So that was weird. Okay, page 46, line 1, word 2. Challenge. There he is. He says good. He says, he says, yep. Okay. Play game. New game. Okay, let's try new game. Oh, wait, there is a game here. This came with a game. Okay, you know what? I had this happen with the Amiga version as well, where I just, like, I'm here, but I can't do anything. This is really frustrating. Dang it. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. This game doesn't seem to be very well made. I, I have to admit that it, it just doesn't seem like it's very well made. Um, bummer. Uh, it kind of looks, kind of looks interesting. Ah. <sighs> So I don't actually like lemmings very much. Like it's okay. The only thing I really care about is the OST. The OST is fantastic. Let's let's go let's go to the uh, uh let's see what's here we go. Oh, this isn't the right one. This isn't the one I was looking for. Well, th this one's good. It's 
it's impossible not to love this song. Tim Wright also uh, composed some of the music for this. Okay, there's the loop. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. Soba, don't. Why would you do that? Soba just start angrily pawing at one of my monitors. Okay, so you know what? Um, this reminds me that... Uh, ad lib card for some reason was just so good at uh generating um warm really like whoops uh really like warm and inviting uh music i, I don't know why it's, it's weird like you could i don't know anyway uh there's an artist who i found on youtube many years ago and I'm not going to spend four minutes playing his entire song for a number of reasons, uh, but I am going to suggest that you all, here we go, all click the link that I just dropped in chat, open it in another tab, and listen to it later. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, unfortunately, I think this guy stopped making music quite some time ago, because his last upload was nine years ago. Um... And, uh, yeah, apparently this is the first song that he made in AdLib Tracker for the personal computer. And it's just really nice. Hang on, what's... Uh, I'm going to play the first few bars here. Oops. Whoa! What's going on? Whoa! The playback just got all screwed up. What happened there? I'm going to try this one more time. Ah, oh, jeez. Going to play the first few measures of the song. Hat jam. See what I mean? Nobody makes music this pleasant. So yeah, uh, everyone, please go listen to that song. Um, the uh, uh, I don't know what it is about ad lib music but for some reason it all has this feeling of um all all like fm sound card music sounds like 
sounds like a summer morning and your mom is making pancakes. I don't know why. Yeah, I imagine the guy didn't die or anything. It's just, you know, a lot of a lot of people who uploaded stuff to YouTube back in the 2000s were just kind of like, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to move on to other stuff with my life, you know. Uh, there wasn't much reason to continue doing it back then, um, unless, well, yeah, complicated. Anyway, point is, um, a lot of people uh, uploaded a few things to YouTube and then just poofed. And, uh, you know, they didn't get much out of it. They said, well, okay, I'm just not going to keep doing that. Uh, and uh, a lot of them are still around. Yeah, honestly, like, you say the same about... Uh, let's see, how to put this. It's a natural human thing. It's a natural animal thing uh, to see something good and try and milk it. You know, it's just a normal thing to do for, for anything living on this planet uh, to go, oh, hey, I, I did thing and I got other thing for it. Let's let's try and parlay that. Right. Um, so I don't you know remotely want to suggest that it's a, 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 a at all a modern phenomenon uh, for someone to do a thing. And if the thing gets any sort of response to immediately triple down on it and just try and 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 get all the eggs out of that golden goose. Um but I think that from our modern perspective, you know, by which I mean, we live in the third era of YouTube because the first era was, you know, 2008, 2006, when people were just, uh, it was just a place to put a video if you, if you wanted to somebody else to have it you know people it was it was like it was like a photo book bucket almost you know people were putting stuff up there without even intending for other people to see it that they didn't know it was just a place to get it so you could send a link to somebody else right um and then once they discovered virality then the second generation of youtube began people started to upload stuff deliberately intending for it to get noticed but no one really quite knew you know what That's weird. Why did I get muted? That's bizarre. Wait, why did that happen? I'm having computer problems today. Anyway, um, but yeah, so people used to upload stuff to YouTube just because, just as a way to share it with other people they personally knew, and then, like, once people realized the stuff got way too much attention if you left it up there, the people started trying to, to angle for that. And the second generation of YouTube began. But now we're in the third generation of YouTube. And this is the grind set era, right? Where every single person who uploads a video is expecting to get millions of views. And the only reason they would leave is if that's not working. As long as, like, their view count is going up, then we can all believe that we're the temporarily, embar temporarily embarrassed, you know, million subscriber count error. And, um... And, uh, that, you know, applies to, ev you know, to everything a little bit, but I, I just, you know, YouTube is a good example of it. Um, so what's always weird to me from the perspective of the modern era, somebody who grew up in the, you know, very late nineties and two thousands, you know, and, and very much in like the post, um, post, uh, recession, you know, minor depression, whatever the hell era and whatnot, you know, people grab shit, they don't let go of it. So what's really super, super, super weird to me, um, let's see, Dan Gorlin. God, I think about this guy all the time. Dan Gorlin was a guy who... I mean, the Wikipedia page for this dude literally opens with the words, Gorlin accidentally got into game development. That's what it says, right? 
Um, the guy wrote Choplifter for the Apple II in 1982, which was a colossal mega hit, right? Um, it got ported to every platform under the sun, and I think everyone owned it. Uh, he then made a game called Airheart, which was even more technically advanced than Choplifter. Like, if you if you play Airheart on an actual Apple II, you'll be sitting there going, no, no, I'm being pranked. Where's the, there's a Raspberry Pi tucked in here or something. Like, it doesn't make sense that the, 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 the system is capable of what that game is doing. Uh, it looks like a true 3D game. It is nuts. Um, and both Choplifter and Airheart have, like, they're not really 30 FPS video, but good lord, do they look like it. They look so much better than, than the Apple II has any possible excuse for. Um, he made two games and then quit. Walked away, never came back. Just pieced. You know, Choplifter sold a billion copies. I don't know how much money he made off of it. Um, but, uh... He just sort of went, eh, whatever. Uh, let's see. There was a... Yeah, here we go. I, I, I don't know how accurate any of this is. This is just literally what's on the wiki page. I haven't checked the, the citations, but this just says, Once the Apple II became outdated, uh, Gorlin couldn't figure out what its successor was going to be. He was hoping the Mac or the Amiga would emerge as the new dominant system, but neither did. He investigated MS-DOS, but was disgusted with the hardware limitations. He says he decided to wait it out and went back to teaching African music and culture, which he had been doing since 1972. As far as anybody knows, you know, just sort of kept doing that. Like, guy just wandered into the industry, developed one of the most impressive, well-known games of all time, developed a second game that's less well-known, but still the most technically impressive thing on the entire Apple II platform, and then just went, okay, well, that was neat. Bye. <laughs> what? You know, there's, there's this trope in, um, in culture, uh, particularly among computer people nowadays, there's this trope. Um, it's, it's metamorphosized over the years. Back in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, I suppose, uh, it was called island escapism. It was this idea that... Uh, you know, your job sucks, you know, you hate your white collar, uh, and uh, all you want to do is get on a boat and go to some island. Let's not talk about weird, you know, cultural <laughs> uh, colonization, da da da, da. Uh, You know, because honestly, that's not even a part of it, right? Like, there is no notion of, like, I'm going to go be a king somewhere. It's just you want to go exist on a beach without thinking about anything, right? And that's metamorphosized eventually into the modern um, the programmer's lament, I'll call it, which is, man, uh, I wish I could just, uh, I wish I could just go buy a farm, just disappear into the woods and, and, you know, raise sheep or, uh, build chairs or whatever. Once in a while, someone does it. And I think people used to do it more, um, I think in the in the the mid to late twentieth century, people used to just pivot like that, just get up, walk away from their six figure income, you know, which would now be a seven figure income, um, just walk away from their six figure income job, regardless of whether it's you know what whether their 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 reasons for doing so are are, are decent and and have great integrity or not. Um, I think people used to do this, which is just just give it all up, and you look at it and go like, what, what, you know, you you're milking that, you know. It's inconceivable someone would just get up and walk away from it. And I think at this point, I feel like we all are looking for, you know, we're all in the talent show. What's your talent, you know? Can you play music? All right, parlay that. Turn that into a big YouTube career. Sell albums, you know. Um, uh, can you do art? Okay, try and figure out how to parlay that, you know. Can you do video? Become a YouTuber? <laughs> Again, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, and uh, um, I think it's really, really hard to imagine now more than ever to imagine somebody having a talent and, and actually walking away from it and doing something either quote-unquote generic, you know, 
something anyone could do um, or just something where they're starting from scratch uh, or something that's less successful or whatever. And I, I don't just mean in terms of financial success, but in terms of, you know, public recognition, uh, in terms of um, stop it, Soba, do not claw my chair or I'll throw you into the sun. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think I think it's just really hard to imagine someone pivoting like that. And so what all this traces back to is, uh, you know, Carl Fellow, Oxygen Star, made incredible music back then. And I think I left him a comment in, at this point, over 10 years ago. Uh, and I said, hey, can I get the, the ad lib file for this? And I think he said, I'm going to eventually release it. Never happened, you know. And um, I, I don't begrudge him at all. He can do whatever he wants. Um, I, I'm not entitled to his work, but it's just strange. Um, it's strange to see somebody who could produce such, th that's what it is, right? As a person who doesn't have that talent, who can't make music that sounds like that. I can't, I've tried. I don't have it in me. This guy, that was his first time ever using that program, right? which means it was his first time ever working with any of those techniques. FM is its own thing, right? And to sit down and be able to just turn out that, okay, that's talent, all right? And, um, you know, go, if you go check out his channel, he's got, if I remember correctly, he's got videos where he's doing live drumming to songs he composed in, in AdLib Tracker. Incredible stuff. Sounds amazing, right? I can't imagine being able to do that and and not trying to get it in front of as many eyes as possible. You know, I'm so insecure about what I'm capable of that the idea of not showing it on every imaginable platform. Oh, yeah, maybe he's got a band camp or, or whatever, but I'm, I'm talking everywhere, right? You know, YouTube, freaking, um, you know, spamming it on, no, it's just YouTube. That's how we, that's how we, that's how we make art go anywhere nowadays. Anyway, it's just weird. It's just, it's, it's so, so different compared to the way that the internet usually works these days. <sighs> Look at this video game. Oh, hello, Soba. Uh, Soba's here, everyone. Soba. Soba. Hello. She has she has a very high poise statistic in Dark Souls. Oh, she's gonna start scratching the monitor, isn't she? Here comes the paw. Oh, this is another game from Rainbow Arts. We played something cool from them earlier. She's hunkering. She pressed C to hunker. doesn't love it.
time to go down. It's not time for soap up. Oh, I forgot that my batteries. Soba? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go up. Sorry you can see my ass a little bit. Oh. Soba. Soba. So further up. Oh my god. No, I am not. I don't want to insert valid data disk. Uh, sucks. It really sucks. Sucks because I actually want to see this game go. Okay, for once I'm gonna actually attempt. I'm gonna actually make an attempt. An attempt will be made. File management. Open game folder. Uh, jeez. Soba, go for the feather. Come on. It's feather time, isn't it? There you go. That's a that's a good cat. Vicious Huntress. Vicious Huntress catches her prey. There we go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. All right, let's see it happen. Let's see it happen, Soba. Come on. There you go. Yeah, that oh, oh, oh you're unstoppable. Good lord. I'm terrified. At this time. Soba. I can you believe I live with this creature? I could be killed at any moment. Incredibly dangerous predator. I'm sorry, if I'm playing with my cat, you're watching. That's just that's that's the agreement. That's the, the handshake agreement of being on the internet. But she's really lazy, so I guess that's all we're going to get. Gosh, she's lazy. <sighs> okay. Um, quick menu, disk management, load disk. I really don't expect this to work. Uh, yeah, she's standing on a 19-inch uh, 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 rack in a, a flight case. Huh. Selba, don't pot the monitor. Come on. You know better. Am I, like, building a character? Get ready for this haul. I thought that's what I was doing. Okay, so what's wild is that this game actually has uh, an option for mouse control for no known reason. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, whoa. Okay, so... Whoa, okay. So energy, mental, and magic are, uh, are three separate categories. Mental is my ammo. There's a little, tr like a little, little creature toy up there. That guy looks like a bastard. Is he going to come down? Oh, yeah, he's going to come down. Oh, damn it. Wow. They told me to get ready for this haul, but I did not get ready. Soba! Soba! Are we going to have trouble? I feel like we're going to have a problem, Soba. Whoa, what? Some of these will join the... Okay, Soba. All right. 
you done got yourself kicked the hell out. I love you, Soba. However. <sighs> Amiga version. Oh, this is a port. Interesting. I wonder where it started. Yeah, this has... Uh, it, yeah, the EGA look is very, like, Zelliard energy. Zelliard. Zelliard. Wait. Oh, okay. So these are... I think this is for, like, building a party of some kind. I don't know what this is. And then that's the let's actually go. I love the mix of, like, Amiga GUI windows yeah. and yeah. custom in-game graphics. Gosh, she really is quite a goblin, isn't she? Yeah. Wait, is this proc gen? This isn't the same level. <laughs> Come on, bud, let's go. Bud, get off the ladder so I can kill you. I guess he ain't gonna. Wait, what? I can't kill them? This is nonsense. What? 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 I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised by the crash, but... Um... Huh. Well, that was weird. Um, huh. You have a gun and bolts of energy of it to protect you. So I guess I had a gun that I didn't find. Um, it has a level designer. And I don't... Okay, and from the pictures, apparently there is a party system of some kind. Wow, okay. That looks, again, like an interesting idea that I would not find accessible. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore it. Um, is this a shmup? Yeah, it's a shmup. Naturally. Oh. Is that just a shmup? It is, but there's a, there's a boy in it. Look at the boy. Yeah, I kind of wonder if that game would actually be more accessible on one of the other platforms. It's just really weird to me that, you know, and again, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be a dick about the Amiga. Um I've I have stopped doing that. But it is weird to me that there's for for a platform that everyone always says like, "Oh, it was, you know, it was groundbreaking. It was, you know, the most capable thing of the whole era, you know, made everything else look like a joke." I'm like, "Okay, from a harder perspective, I don't disagree with you for a moment. Well, actually, I'll say like we could, we could, we could argue about that because the thing I'll say about some of the other platforms that did exist, particularly in the later days, like the early '90s, um, is that they weren't limited by. So let me rephrase this. The Amiga was not just doing pure pixel pushing, right? And that placed limitations on what it was capable of doing. But even ignoring that, even if we're not, you know, if we're not getting uh, super picky about the details of what was possible, it really seems like an awful lot of games were just ported or developed quite poorly. But I'm really impressed at how many games were ported poorly. There are a number of games where the Amiga version is the worst version of the game on any platform. And I just don't understand that. How did that happen? Like... Wait, what the hell? We gotta look at this. This might be some Geometry Wars shit. We gotta look at it. Um... You know, there's... Like we've seen so far, you know, the Marvel Madness, it's got really, really bad music. I don't understand why that happened. And, you know, people sit there and tell you that, oh, the Amiga, you know, had the best sound hardware in the market. I'm like, okay, then why was it so commonly the case that games would have god-awful music on just the Amiga version? Holy crap.
Okay. This is wild. There's some weird, like, gravity nonsense going on here that I cannot figure out. Oh, you know what? I'll bet I've got this, uh, oh, that's what's wrong. Whoops. Because I've got it, uh, I've got it configured in port one when it should be port two. Crap. So I'm having to use the damn mouse as the joystick. Oops. My levels are a little low. I think I'm just talking quietly. Unless you mean the game. The game is just quiet. Um, okay, let's, uh, restart. Let's try this again. Okay, um, we'll go to port two. There we go. That should be a lot better. There we go. Oh, okay, and it's, it's not, uh, Asteroids Motion, it's direct, uh... Okay, so, really frustrating thing about this that pretty much kills it is that it has the, um the ancient style approach to sprite management where if you fire a laser and there's already a laser out your la the one that you have out just disappears so if you do this your laser bolts just never go anywhere like oh come on yeah that's uncalled for i think the goal is basically to do that um and or Okay, so, okay, so that guy can be destroyed with simple laser bolts. I don't think the pink guy can. What about this thing? Can I destroy this thing? Looks like no. There we go. So yeah, very, um, very cool. Oh, oh, okay. Maybe that is what I'm supposed to do. Wow. Okay. Okay, well, I think we've seen the whole game. That's... Yeah, the, the vector graphics are really neat, although I can see kind of how they're doing them. Um, I think the, the whole... The whole mutated grid there is actually a sprite. And uh, that's the only part of the screen that's actually being manipulated. Which is uh, it's not a... You know, not that much of a dunk, but... Um... Anyway, anyway, okay. Yeah, that was kind of neat. But, um, oh god, that looks awful. You know, um, game am I thinking of? Isn't it frickin... Yeah. Yeah. Hang on a second. I don't have this? Oh, weird. Okay, for some reason I don't have it uh, for in my wrong collection, but... Yeah. Castlevania for the Amiga has the worst version of the Castlevania soundtrack that exists. Like, this shipped. Like, you're kidding me, right? Like, I think this might be running too slow, but does that even matter? This wouldn't sound good if it was a little bit faster. Here, 
your vampire killer. It's not even right. You know, part of me does wonder, um, okay, so, so theories, right? Let's, let's talk theories. Um, you know, one possibility is that the person who uploaded this to YouTube did it wrong. You know, I've never actually played Castlevania for the Amiga on a real Amiga. Uh, so maybe the emulation was wrong. Um, maybe, uh... You know, it looks actually, it looks like they, somebody else ripped the files from the game, and then this was just played back with Deli Player. So there's like four layers of damage that could have been done there, right? So that's bad. And then um, it's also possible that it's, you know, a, uh, it's possible that it's the NTSC version being played on a PAL system, so it's too slow, you know, so that would mess it up too, so... Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'd have to go look it up. I'd have to find a video of somebody actually playing it. Um, you know what? Actually, I think I... Oh, no. Okay. I thought I, I thought for a moment that I found um, a video of somebody uh, actually playing it, but it's actually Castlevania AGA, which is a fan project. Uh, there's also... There's also a speedrun... Yeah, there's a 1 hour 16 speed run, uh, and this was done a couple years ago. The only description in the video is just, this game sucks. Uh, and then there's the top comment is, I just finished this garbage heap myself. I thought I'd pass along some advice to anyone crazy enough to try this game. One, don't. <sighs> um, holy crap, there's no continues. You have to save scum throughout the whole game. Uh, oh no. <laughs> and also, um, uh, one of the people who, uh, who apparently worked on the port replied to the, the video and said like, oh, I made the graphic design for this 31 years ago. And people were replying to me like, oh, sorry, man. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. You know, the graphics are probably fine. Uh, but even if they aren't, like, obviously they didn't put the right funding into this, if that's how the... Oh my god. Okay, no, I'm watching this video, and the music really is that bad, and also the graphics are garbage. Holy shit, this looks bad. So, yeah, um, I don't understand why the Amiga was so bad about getting crappy ports, because it should have been capable of doing so much better, so... You know, was it purely just the fact that they were underpaying people? Were they just not not putting enough money into it and, and getting D-tier developers? Or was there something... Uh, or, or if not D-tier developers, were they not giving them enough time? Um, or was it something like, were there too many, uh, too many fingers in the pie? You know, like, what? 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 What's going on? Um... I don't understand how it happened. I'm sure the people developing these must have known that they could do better, so I have to believe that they had some reason not to do better. I think probably they must have gotten rushed. You know, if you think about it, that Castlevania port probably came out eight years after that game originally released for the NES. So... I mean, to be fair, as much as I, I, I do adore Echo, it's also kind of a mess, so... But it's certainly much better made, much better music, much you know more solid gameplay, and so on and so forth. You know, so salt aside, um, man, is this really the way that we're, the way that everything is going tonight? Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, actually, gluttonous Maximus, you you make a very good point because it was always the case always the case that the way these ports worked is Konami or Capcom or whoever yep um, would issue the contract to somebody and then they wouldn't pick up the phone they had no English speaking developers uh, um, or, or, or 
there was literally nobody you could talk to, not a single person you could talk to. Um, if you wanted the source art from the game, that was too bad. You could either rip it yourself if you knew how to do that by, by you know, pulling the ROMs out of a cartridge or an arcade system. Or if you couldn't do that, then you had to repixel it by hand. And given that there was virtually no way to, like, get a... There were no capture devices that anybody could afford, and, and those that you could afford were garbage. Um, so you couldn't... You, you had to redraw all the graphics by eye. Um, you had to do it quickly. You had to do it within a, a palette constraint. And then you had to figure out from scratch how all the physics worked. You know, you had to just look at the game and jump and go, okay, well, I think when he jumps that you, you know, move by this many units. And, you know, and then you're also... I play this on Apple too. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. Like, don't don't get me wrong. Um, there are plenty of very good reasons f that have nothing to do with the developers being incompetent. You know, I think that I think that very few incompetent developers can actually finish a product. You know, I, I think if if someone's truly incompetent, I think that pretty much implies that they can't can't get anything done um i think usually people are trying their best but a really 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 good dev might be you know a burger becky might be able to bang out something actually really pro grade and and acceptable in a very short period of time but somebody who's good but not incredible um, might not be able to make the impossible happen. And it always is the case that, yeah, there's not enough resources and too little time. So... It's it's always just... You know, it's, it's hard to... It's hard to come to grips with the fact that the publishers were so shitty about it. Uh, so I always forget it. You know, I... I always find myself going like, man, what could possibly be the explanation? And of course, I know the explanation because I've read it out of the angry liner notes left in ROM files by pissed off developers. Okay, but now now that I've said all that, what the hell are we playing? Uh, Hudson, you said I might have played this on the Apple II, but man, I don't know about that. Pod to store, energy armor, fuel, battery, plasma rifle. Pod to store. Energy armor. Oh shit, that was a consumable. Wow. That looks like a gas pump. It looks like I could use it. Oh wow, you can I think you can actually hit stuff when it's off screen. Holy shit. Whoa, what? Hello. Uh am I winning? Are you winning, son? I don't think I am. Wait, that worked? Come on. Oh, okay. Did, did, I, did I do it? Wah! 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 Hard. Difficult. Spock voice. Useless. Unwise. I don't like this game. This isn't a good game. This is the other... What's the opposite of good? Oh, okay. I guess I successfully teleported. Yeah, I think there was... This is like Dan Dare 3. 
Yeah, and you know, I was thinking about something. Uh, regarding the, uh, the number of colors bit, because, um... You know, why does Castlevania for Amiga sound so bad? It really does sound like it's missing half the, uh, half the instruments. Well... Oh shit, I'm out of ammo. This game is interesting, but I'm gonna say not very good. In the end. Uh, and I'm gonna stop, um casting soon here anyway so um but what i was gonna say is that someone's really fascinating to me for the longest time you know i'd heard that the the nes only had uh i think three perhaps four i think it was four audio channels right and they're very um they're very limited. It's like two, what is it? Two squares, a triangle, and and a, a noise channel, and then a DPCM that, that doesn't often get used, I think is what it is. And um, so you're playing a game, and you're listening to the music, and it's, you know, it's Mega Man 3, so it's got this, like, lush, uh, orchestrated soundtrack with all this, you know, wild polyphony going on and shit. And you, you, you know, you fire your gun and the music continues and the sound effect happens. And you're like, wait, what? What happened there? Well, you know, obviously it's pretty well known at this point that uh, when you fire your gun, it mutes one of the sound channels. And, you know, as a kid, I, I noticed that. I noticed if I boop, 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 that I would, if I paid attention, I could tell like, oh, we lost the percussion um, or we lost the, um, you know, the lead and we just have the bass line or, or whatever. And... I always thought that uh, that had to have been some sort of automatic system. But no, it turns out that every single developer had to program that from scratch. Uh, there is no music format for the NES uh, or any platform, really. Uh, it is a program written in assembly that feeds note values and, and you know, volume uh, to the individual sound channels. And so Capcom had their sound driver. They used, you know, in, in everything. And Konami had theirs and... Everybody had theirs, and, and so everyone had to come up with their own approach to uh, sound channel, um, uh, 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 what's it called, stealing, muting, whatever. And um, that meant when you fired your gun that it had to intelligently, you know, based on whatever level you were on and, you know, whatever song was playing, it had to know which channel was worth killing and, and for how long, and then had to bring back the music as quickly as possible. Ducking, there you go, that's fair. Um robbing I think might also be a term i've heard um and uh that makes perfect sense but it's also really complicated and i think that again i don't want to be too down on on you know western developers of the era but i remember when i was growing up um i didn't have access to I didn't understand how a lot of things worked. You know, I, I saw that things... I thought the idea of making a video game seemed completely wild. It seemed um, utterly inconceivable that, that all this... I knew some of the ideas behind making a video game uh, as, as far as, like, okay, you have to program character movement. You have to, you know, draw graphics. You know, you have to make sounds. And then you have to somehow, you know, you have to write code that generates machine language that moves the pixels around in memory and whatnot. Okay, I get all that. The idea that you could actually make it to the finish line and produce a finished product that played, that, that made 30 frames per second of action come out of your monitor, it seemed completely unbelievable to me. Um, it, it just, it still actually does and based on what I've read uh, you know, blogs and, and posts and post-mortems from uh, particularly solo game developers, it is actually unbelievable that anybody makes it across the finish line. It's so much work, it's so complicated, and every single new game has to reinvent almost everything from scratch. Ver like, 99% of what goes into a video game does not come, you know, prefab. It, it has to be made. Um, and so, like, the, there's the, the legendary... Uh, uh, the legendary, like celeste.c file or whatever it is it's like in the in 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 the game celeste the character's motion 
is contained in like a 150,000 line single function. Uh, and you're not supposed to do it that way, but you know, Maddie had to figure out what to do and that's how she figured out how to do it. And, um, Every single game is like that. At some point, you have to sit down and with a blank, you know, main dot C and write main. And then you have to write like think. And then you've got to put all the code in there that happens when everything thinks. And so every single game has to reinvent this all from scratch. Well, as a kid, when I first started dabbling in programming, which thank God I did not really get anywhere with, um, I, uh, at first, I was messing around with, like, Visual Basic uh, under, like, Windows 98. And every time you did anything with the graphics, it was super flickery. Um, under GDI, the Windows 9X uh, graphics library, there was no double buffering support unless you were using, like, DirectX. And I understood that if you... I understood what a frame buffer was. And that if you drew graphics to the screen, and then you wanted to draw different graphics, you were going to have to erase the first ones and then draw the new ones. And in my head, I'm like, well, you're going to see the erase happen. You you know, you, you got to take so long to go through and delete all those pixels. Of course you're going to see it. Well, I wasn't doing the math. I wasn't thinking to myself, this processor is 300 megahertz. It's making 300 million uh, operations per second. You know, it only takes a few thousand of those to wipe the entire screen. You know, duh. And I knew video games existed, but it, I just could not figure out how it was that every single program that I had on my PC, because at the time I had, you know, Windows 98, and I had, like, uh, Red Hat Linux 5.1, and every single program that did anything flickered. Everything flickered. It all flickered. And then I'd play a video game on, like, the NES, or I would see, because I didn't own one, but I would see somebody playing it on, like, the PlayStation, and I'd think, how? How is, What? How are they making it go without flickering? Where's the flickering? Why does it look so smooth? It seemed like black magic to me. And um, so I never thought of the concept of double buffering. It makes perfect sense. I never thought of it. And when I made it to Windows 2000, which had GDI+, Plus, which had built-in double buffering, and I learned about the switch, I'm like, well, that's not going to work. That's obviously not going to work. And I went into Visual Basic, and I turned the switch on, and it worked. And all of a sudden, my programs didn't flicker. And I was suddenly able to draw smooth graphics. And I thought, no, that can't be right. What's, what, what's going on here? What wizardry is this? And, um, you know, it seems entirely possible to me that a person making games in their bedroom in 1986 or 1989 or 1991 had never heard of the idea of channel muting, of ducking. Of, of, of temporarily borrowing Channel 1 to play a sound effect. You know? Um, to give you a case in point, I found out today that I have been processing every single one of my videos wrong for the last two years. Uh, I've been running my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras in extended video mode, and I didn't know that, and I didn't know what that did. And I've apparently been uh, processing all, like, all my colorimetry is all completely incorrect. Um, I've been dropping all my footage into DaVinci and going, like, ah, that looks all washed out. And then, like, messing with the contrast sliders and whatnot to try and get it to look right. I just thought this was how things were. I know better. I, like, I know that there is a proper way to do this. But if you Google it, like, how to process DaVinci black magic, uh, video in all you get is this grind set horse shit you know what's up youtube okay i know a lot of you are just starting out with the black magic pocket cinema 6k pro like me and you want to know in davinci resolve how to get the best color out of your footage well it's not hard so first it's all grind shit grind set horse shit and so essentially it doesn't exist it's just it's nothing you know uh, westworld you know it doesn't look like anything to me um it's nothing. I literally can't watch those videos. I cannot watch a YouTube video tutorial. And the wild thing about DaVinci Resolve is that um, it's it's just nuts. But Adobe Premiere is used by people who actually have jobs and are, like, over 35. And so if you go to Google and type in, like, 
how to do something in Adobe Premiere, you'll get an answer. Sometimes uh, on a forum where people are like, huh, that's an interesting question. Let's work this out. Uh, sometimes somebody will just say, okay, here's how you do it. Sometimes you get a Reddit post that explains how to do it. Sometimes you get uh, a, web, a website. Sometimes just websites. Sometimes you get a page from a manual. Uh, all these all these different sources of information. Sometimes it's irritating, but a lot of the time it's like, you know, how do I... Uh, how do I um, um, how do I how do I curve my keyframes in the animation editor in Premiere? Oh, here's how you do it. You do this for Resolve. It's all grind set, hundred percent grind set, hundred percent. Every single result is what's up, YouTube. Fifteen minutes to show you how to click one button that doesn't solve your problem. It's so so tough. It's just Resolve. Uh, in my opinion, it's not worth going back to Premiere just to have better documentation. But yeah, uh, the Resolve manual is so, so bad. And uh, the um, the internet resources for it are so terrible that it's just not worth it, right? It's just... And nobody has an answer because there's like... There's so many different combinations of shit. And people all assume that I want some... Like, okay, so you're... So you're shooting in 24 FPS and trying to make something that looks like a movie. No, I just want a good-looking YouTube video. No one does that. No one's trying to do that. All these people buying Blackmagic cameras uh, and, and going on Reddit to talk about are all aspiring filmmakers who are never going to shoot a movie in their whole life. And so all the information available is useless because it's like, okay, so you want it to look, you, you know, you're trying to shoot day for night. You're trying to make it look like it's the golden hour when it actually isn't. No, I'm not trying to do any of that. I just want it to look like a human being is in the picture instead of this weird washed out garbage. So all I knew how to do was just drag the video into the damn edit tab, go to color and just move the sliders around till it looked good. Turns out I've been fucking this up the whole time, the whole time. If I had had this shit set to film log, then when I dropped it into uh, Black Magic uh, into DaVinci, it would have been un unviewable, and then I would have gone into the LUT selector, and I would have selected the LUT for film log, and then it would have looked perfect. But there is no LUT for extended video, and also I didn't know I needed to do that. I didn't know I was shooting an extended video. I didn't know what that meant. I think the camera came with it turned on. If I'd been shooting in video mode, that's just sRGB. I would have been fine this whole time. I wouldn't have had as much latitude. Uh, it probably saved me because, like, overall, my videos all look worse than they should. But there's probably some cases where I would have had, like, blown out um, blown out highlights um, that I was otherwise able to recover. But if I'd been shooting in... Uh, in normal video mode and exposing correctly this whole time, all my videos would look a lot more natural. I'd look less like like I was made out of putty. Uh, or if I'd been shooting in film log, then I would have been processing them correctly. But instead, I was shooting in this weird in-between thing and all my gamma curves were getting crushed. I've been doing this for two years. And I have the internet, right? So it is entirely possible that a person could just sit around doing their job. So it would be incredibly prolific. You know, in, in the time I've been working with these, I put out, what, 40 videos? Something like that. Every single one of them processed incorrectly with readily available information. It just took asking the right person, right? So I'm saying that in 1986, it could have been the difference between an Amiga developer who happened to go, God, it sucks that we can't do sound effects and music at the same time, in front of somebody else who goes, no, you just, you know, you do this. And the guy goes, oh, God, that's so obvious. It could be the difference between a game having and not having that capability. Well... Uh, Blob, it's not like HDR per se. Like, it's not meant to be HDR. Um, as I understand it, film log is basically like a way of getting more dynamic range, but it's meant to be unpacked when you process it. So I was... But it's, yes, very similar to the concept of... Yeah, it, it, it was like HDR footage compressed into an SDR space, something like that. Anyway, um, see, so yeah, all, my, all my gamma curves are crushed. Um... But, uh, I don't remember the end of that sentence, but you get the gist. Yeah, it, it's, it's entirely possible that, that uh, yeah, so just the, the right two people so frequently failed to run into each other that this information just didn't get disseminated, and all these Amiga games ended up having... Oh, that's what I was going to say. All these Amiga games ended up having, you know, only sound or only music because nobody 
knew the trick. Well, the Castlevania game, one possibility is that the the person who developed the game itself, you know, wrote a music engine for it and dinked around with it and went, okay, that's working. And then he contracted a musician, a composer, to bring over the soundtrack who dutifully went through and recreated the Castlevania soundtrack in four-channel audio. And then the programmer gets it and goes, oh my god, this is four-channel. I need somewhere to put the sound effects. And just, you know, it was two weeks to ship. He's still working on the physics and level design. Just turns off two channels of the music. Because he doesn't know, you know, that you can do the channel robbing thing. You know, it could have happened. So, you know, there's so many ways this could have gone down. And I think that that's as plausible a theory as any. Um, it'd be It'd be really interesting... The thing that sucks is, like, you cannot ask people about this, I think, unless you're a professional uh, publication. I think if you were, like, Gama Sutra, I'm never calling them GameDeveloper.net, that's stupid. Um, I think if, if you were from, like, Gama Sutra, uh, and, you know, you had, like, clout behind your name, you'd be able to, like, email someone and go, we'd like to talk to you about why your game sucked, uh, just frankly. I think you could get away with that. But as a nobody, you know, I'm not a respected games journalist or anything. If I were to email somebody and go like, hey, I want to talk about why your game sucked, I think they would either ignore me or come back and tell me to go fuck myself uh, or uh, would just be like, hey, I did, it, you know, it didn't suck. You know, it was actually blah, 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 blah. And I just don't think you could have a, an honest conversation about it because who would not be sore about that sort of thing? You know, w would I be thrilled if somebody came up to me and said, hey, you know, I want to talk about why your YouTube video from five years ago sucked. Um, I don't know. I, I might, but I can totally understand why a lot of people wouldn't. And um, it's kind of sucks because it's, it's what's kept me from emailing a lot of people who I tracked down who were associated with things that I've been interested in. You know, I find people on, on LinkedIn or Twitter sometimes and stuff like that, and I go to hit that, that DM button or email them, and I'm like, wait a minute, are they going to be happy? It, it, what is their response going to be? I'm going to get in touch and say, hey, you worked on this failed product that didn't make any sense. Uh, you want to talk about how it ended up that way? I've had people email me and say, I worked on that product you talked about. Boy, it sucked. Let me tell you why. But I'm not going to open a conversation like that. I'm not going to be the person coming to them and saying, like, hey, the thing you did was a failure. And, um... Yeah. Uh, it's also just not me, but, um... In general, you know, it's, it's not most people to approach somebody and say, like, hey, you screwed up. How did it happen? Once in a while, somebody actually does do this, and we get a cool interview out of it. Somebody is like, oh, let me tell you about it. You know, oh, you can't believe what it was like. You know, the company wouldn't talk to us, and um, we had no resources. You know, we were, you know, had three weeks to port the thing, da-da-da-da-da. Sometimes that happens, but most of the time, this stuff just gets lost to time. And I, I think a lot of it is because, you know, the people who develop this stuff go like, well, that sucked, and disappear into the woodwork. Wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, Nadia, um, Burger Becky is happy to talk about the stuff that went poorly because A, it's not her fault. Um, and B, she's done plenty of stuff that she rocked at, right? And I think that's another big difference, you know. I think the more successes a given developer has under their belt, the more likely they're going to be willing to talk about the stuff that sucked. So I, I didn't look into who developed that version of Castlevania, but I'll, you know, frankly, it's probably somebody who isn't known for anything else. Uh, maybe a couple other iffy ports. And if it was somebody who went on to have a huge career, you know, at Blizzard or something, uh, maybe you could track that person down and have a conversation with them. But as it stands, probably not. I, I try to do a good job uh, of of being generous and and trying to put myself in their shoes and think like what could have caused this sometimes you just go it it sucks though because when you're talking about stuff like this the worry is that the actual story is that they were incompetent through no fault of their own you know what i mean 
it sucks to say that like there there is a strong argument that an enormous number of programmers working on major projects that everyone uses right now are incompetent some people believe that that the reason we have so many security vulnerabilities and everything is because not because c is intrinsically that dangerous but because the people writing it shouldn't be and should be more formally educated and have more training about how to avoid these things and be doing more formal review and, and yada yada yada. there are arguments to that point um and i think that the further back you go in time it probably becomes more and more and more likely um that you're talking about you know exactly that do the people who are working on those projects know that they don't know what they should know well in retrospect it may be obvious but uh at the time you know um it's such a complicated thing to do and writing a game is such a complicated thing to do that um again somebody working in their bedroom in 1986 may not actually have known that they were you know total garbage compared to anybody working on staff at Capcom. You know, they were doing their best. How are they supposed to know that this isn't isn't how you make a game? Um, and so it w really seems like it would be a pretty rude awakening to go, hey, that game you made sucked. And have them go, it did? I didn't know that. <laughs> go to hell. Nobody told me it sucked. I thought it was great. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anyway... I don't know. I, I, I sometimes wish I had a different kind of personality. It would make, me, make it easier for me to go ask those questions. I'd like to hire a staff interviewer someday. I want to I I get 10 million YouTube subscribers and, and become uh, and, 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 and you know, get a decent budget uh, just so I can hire people to do the stuff that I'm no good at. Uh, all right, everyone. Um, it's been like three and a half hours, I just realized. So um, this actually ended up being a pretty nice night. Um, so thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Like I said earlier, I've been having some health issues lately and um, been having some pretty weird times. And I just wanted to have a normal time, and this worked. So I really appreciate it. Uh, everybody have a good whichever day of the weekend it is for you. Peace out.